this morning and open them to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to be in verses 1 through 4 today. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 4. We are back on track now with our little series within Ephesians, Saving Your Family. And today we are looking at parents and kids and the relationship that should be taking place that God desires to take place between the two. So let's take a look here at Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 1. We've seen now the relationship between wives and husbands and how that connects to the, the imagery of Christ's relationship to the church. And now we see sort of the genesis of where that comes from as we look to the relationship of children and parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord because this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. And fathers, don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you today recognizing your desire for family and the grace that you want to give humanity through the formation of it. But we also come to you as a people that understand how difficult it can be for children and their parents to relate to one another and for us to be the mothers and the fathers that we need to be in you to them and how they, Lord, need to be the children they are to you and their relationship to us. So we pray, God, as we look into this word today, that you would just take all of our hearts and open them and help us, Lord, to see this word in such a way that it transforms our lives that we would leave from it changed people and how we relate to one another within the family. And we just pray, God, all of these things in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today speaks very plainly to a key part of the family dynamic as God has set it up. That is that parents must teach and kids must follow the word of God to live a good and meaningful life in Christ. From the very beginning, this has been God's will, that mankind would know him and make him known in the world through the family relationships that he has desired for us to have. God says in Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. So what does that look like? Well, God tells us, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And the delivery method that God has put in place for this knowledge of him to run through the family is for children to honor and obey their parents as their parents teach them of God and raise them in his word. And this is not easy. It's not easy because we are always in conflict as Christ's people with the world around us. So there's worldliness in a parent's heart, there's worldliness in our children's hearts, and God is wanting us to intervene with his word, that his word take root within us both, instead of the root of the world. And it can be tough. 
I tell you, the, the things I put my mother and grandmother through is absolutely ridiculous. It is incredible some of the heathen things I did as a kid. And this is something that doesn't help necessarily the family relationship. It, it brings out either the word in us or the world. For example, one time my, my grandmother worked at the bank. The bank had a kitchen in it. I went into the kitchen. I turned the stove on. We left. The bank caught on fire. <laughs> That's no joke. Uh, they do did, they did have a very nice brick building now. Uh, so that worked out well. Uh, these are the things parents deal with. And, and, you know, I turned from my arsonist ways uh, when I was younger and decided I wanted to be a firefighter, which was great. So I had the firefighter uniform and the little, but y'all remember the little hats with the light on top and the siren? I had all of that. So one day everybody's at Mamaw's after church on Sunday and I decide I'm going to be a firefighter. So I grab the garden holes and I go into the living room with it and proceed to spray everybody and everything down with the water. It's tough, tough, tough. Being a parent, being a grandparent, and even being a kid. I was once part, just since we're just in full confessional today, <laughs> I was once part of a heathen crew of children from my school that uh, we took a field trip to the zoo. We're all from the country, right? So animals in captivity isn't our thing. So we proceeded to open all of the cages that we could, and we had peacocks and goats and everything else running through the zoo. We are still barred from that zoo to this day. <laughs> they did. I said, don't ever bring, don't ever bring another class from that school back here. So did I get disciplined for these actions? Well, probably not nearly enough as I needed to be. But by love and grace, what I was taught was the Word of God. And I had parents in my life that loved me enough to drive me to Jesus. And that's what this is all about. And that's why this Word is so necessary and it's so serious for us all today. You see, my brothers and sisters, we live in a time when there is an absolute war against God's design of the family, and it's reached a fever pitch. Everything God has given to the family as good, Satan has taken that, twisted it, and deceived mankind with it so that now we operate against God's design in such a way that we believe this brings us more prosperity and more joy when in fact it just brings us greater and greater misery. Our enemy knows, friend, that the very best way to ruin souls is to destroy the family. So God designed family to have him as the centerpiece of the home. The pastor was to be the father, the mother was to be a support in that effort, and children were to honor and obey their parents growing in the knowledge of Christ as the word was given to them. Satan takes that, and he tells us, no, children are not a blessing. In fact, there's such a burden, go ahead and kill them. Get rid of them. Story coming out this last week, I tell you folks, this is right here in the USA. You and I better wake up to the reality of what is happening here. This woman is in a restaurant, tries to drown her infant in the toilet. Thankfully, somebody was in there that saw what was happening and God had to intervene and save the baby. Now, in the very worst of cases, right, this woman would be charged with attempted murder. That's what this was. If she tried to drown me in the toilet, that's what she would get. At the very least, she would be charged with attempted manslaughter. Guess what? She pleads guilty to child endangerment and gets six months probation. Wow. That's right here in your good old United States of America, Christian nation. Wake up, folks. 
we must wake up to this. Everything about the family is being torn down. God calls children to obey and honor their mother and their father. What's our sin bring us to do? Disobey and dishonor our mother and our father. God says, let marriage be the, the bond of covenant for a marriage that a family would stay together for life. Now we just bypass marriage altogether. We don't even care about it. The battle is real. It is fierce. And it's something that all of us face. And blessed are those that will overcome and honor their parents as God has designed. And blessed are those parents that will instruct their families in the way of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are literally at a time here where all of us in the family, mother, father, and children, we all have to be like Joshua, and we have to say, if Jesus is Lord, let him be Lord. If he's not, then let him not be. But as for me and my house, we will follow the Lord. Amen. So let's learn how to do this now. As God tells us first today, that children are to honor and obey their parents. Let's bring this back to verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord because this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. Now, when Paul writes this and he says children, we need to understand who these children are that he's referring to. Uh, this word in the Greek does not refer to a, a little baby, and it doesn't refer to just young children. Uh, what this is referring to is anybody that is still under the care of their parents. So very little babies, teenagers, in our day, could be 25, 35-year-olds, okay? Uh, we, we're kind of in a perpetual adolescence mode in, in America right now. And... That refers to them all. So we're talking about the whole group here. And of course, parents are to always be honored and obeyed, even when we grow up. Miss McKee says amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when my kids were little, they found it hilarious that uh, we'd be back home and mom would tell me to, to do something. You know, and I pop right up and go do it. And they're just all looking at that like, well, he, he's the one that always tells people what to do. <laughs> and if, if I gave any resistance whatsoever, you know, I'll do that in a second. Mom teasingly would say, do it right now or you're going to get a whooping. And my kids would lay on the floor laughing about that. They thought it was so hilarious, you know. But the reality is, you obey and you honor your mother you obey and honor your parents at all times. We need to keep that heart for our parents within us, and it starts right at our youngest age. Our Lord Jesus is a great example of this, folks. Everywhere you see him interacting with his parents in Scripture, he does it with honor and obedience to them. When he's little and even when he's hanging from the cross, dying for our sins, he honors his earthly parents. Now, I want us to see here why we are to honor and obey our parents. So we see here that Paul tells us that we're to honor and obey our parents because it is right. That's just the, the blood fact of the matter that he says, children, honor and obey your parents because this is right. It is right in God's eyes to honor and obey one's parents, and it has been that way from the beginning. Wherever man is found, and whatever culture or place they are found in, it is right to obey your parents in the Lord, Paul says. That's very important, in the Lord. So notice closely there, kids, that it's not just obeying so mom and dad won't be on your case. Although there's benefits to that. <laughs> It is doing so because you are in the Lord. In other words, you are honoring and pleasing God by honoring and obeying your parents. This is what makes it right. That which is done for God, as it is told to us by God, is never wrong, but will always be right. And there should be a deep satisfaction and joy in our hearts to know that we are being real with God and how we honor God our mothers and our fathers. It's living righteously. 
And anything safe said, honor and obey them. And then let's just get that out of the way because somebody always run. Well, what if mom and dad call me to sin? Well, you don't do that, right? Okay, so we got that debate settled. Your king is Jesus. But if anything safe sin, honor and obey them. Now notice also here that we're to honor and obey our parents because of their reward. And what is the reward? It's this, Paul says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life in the land. Well, there you go. You want a long, happy life? Of course, we all do. Well, it begins as you learn to honor your father and mother. This is the promise of God, and it's a reward that you should seek. There's nothing wrong with seeking it. What is a huge reason as to why I seek God in my life? I want his reward. I'm not ashamed to say it. God himself, and he says, anybody that comes to me must believe that God is. We can have to believe that he is who he says he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. I'm all about that reward. For us, that comes through honoring and obeying our father and mother. And if you doubt God's intentions to reward you who will honor your father and mother, just take a look at what happens when you don't. Listen to this from Exodus 21, 15. Whoever strikes his father or his mother shall be put to death. Whoever steals a man and sells him, and anyone found in possession of him, shall be put to death. Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. Of course, we all hear that and we're like, ooh, that's an Old Testament God. It's the same God as the New Testament. Same God. But we hear this and we're like, man, that is harsh. Of course, in my mind, I'm like, hmm. My kids would have died long ago. <laughs> but think about it. This is such a thing deep in the heart of God as he is forming this holy nation on the earth that he knows that if the family breaks down, everything is lost. So he is willing to safeguard that with the strongest possible sentences for these crimes. If there's rebellion against the mother or father, they will be put to death. And when you read through Israel's history and all the tragedy that they went through, all the pain and all the killing and all the conquering by foreign nations and all the being sent into exile through these foreign nations, it all happened because... They did not obey and honor their mother and father, primarily because their mother and fathers did not honor and obey God. So this all goes together. Check this out from Judges 2. They did not listen to their judges, for they played the harlot and went after other gods and bowed themselves down to them. They turned aside quickly from the way in which their fathers had walked and obeyed the commandments of the Lord. They did not do as their Father. So you see there's a correlation here. There's a connection here between how you honor and obey your earthly parents and how you honor and obey your heavenly father. Our parents are a picture of him, although no parent is going to be perfect like him. Nevertheless, our ability to learn of God and obey him comes from learning him and from our uh, obeying our parents just as our Lord himself did. Check this comparison out from the book of Proverbs. We read in chapter 1 and verse 8, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath around your head and ornaments about your neck. Those who are taught of God by their parents beautify themselves by honoring and obeying that word. That's what God is saying here. It makes your life pleasant. You are adorned with good things from God. They make you a gracious person. On the other hand, you've got this kind of kid in Proverbs 30, 11. There is a kind of man who curses his father and does not bless his mother. There is a kind who is pure in his own eyes, yet is not washed from his filthiness. That's the total opposite of the beautiful person that honors and obeys 
their parents. This, this kid here is the kid that is stiff-necked against his parents. Everything they say is going to be met with no rebellion. I know better. It's amazing. Ama simply amazing how wise we all were when we were children in our parents' homes. It's incredible. I just wonder where that wisdom went for me. I think I've gotten dumber the older I've gotten. This guy, this kid doesn't honor him, doesn't obey them. He's arrogant, he's proud, he does what is right in his own eyes, and God says your filth is not washed away. That's huge. He's saying you remain in your sins. You have no part, no forgiveness, no hope. It's pretty serious stuff. God illustrates his disgust with such a person when he says in verse 17 of that chapter that the eye that mocks a father and scorns a mother, the ravens of the valley, will pick it out and the young eagles will eat it. That's pretty great. How much better to humble yourself and be cleansed. Be cleansed by the blood of Christ and receive this humble spirit that looks to your mother and father with grace and seeks to obey them and honor them. And understand that everything they are doing and investing in your life is for your good as it comes through the word of God. By the way, the hellbound person will not display this quality. 2 Timothy 3 2 says, People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, and disobedient to their parents. That's what will mark the end days and those who will have no part in Christ. That's not the type of person we want to be. And we can totally avoid that empty, evil way of life by honoring and obeying our parents. And now let's turn here secondly to see that parents are to train and instruct their kids in Christ. As it is written here, fathers don't stir up anger in your children, but bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So while our translations likely all say fathers here, in the Greek New Testament, that word is actually used for fathers and for parents. So I'm going to lump mothers in here as well. The call for us is not to raise our children in such a way that they are provoked or stirred up to anger, but rather to bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, let's take a moment here to ask ourselves, how exactly do we stir up anger in our children? You know, a lot of people read this verse and they kind of get lost at that point. They, they hear God say, don't stir up anger in your children, but they, they don't really know how they are doing that if they are doing it. Let's find out the answer to that. How does this happen? Just at the outset here, the truth is this is something that most parents probably have done at some time or another because the antidote to it is to bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So, if we have ever failed to do that, if we have ever failed to raise our children up in the training and instruction of the Lord, then what we have done is contributed to stirring them up to anger. If we have not been gracious to them as our Heavenly Father is gracious to us, if we have not been uh, people of the Word as God has given us His Word to them, then we are contributing to making them angry people. Why? Because when you don't know the boundaries, you're very unhappy. I've, I've always been amazed at this, and I've I'm sure it was true in myself, although I didn't recognize it when I was little, but I saw it very clearly in, in my children, that kids, like all kids, will push the boundaries, right? They, they want to know how far they can go. Now, as parents, we think they're doing that to see just how far we'll go before we snap, okay? That's probably not what they're doing. They're just wanting to see how far they can go and no further. And that can come in a variety of ways. And what I've noticed is my kids would be the most unhappy, the most unpleasant, the most angry when they didn't know the clear boundaries. Now, once that boundary was set, 
What's going to happen? The same thing that happens anytime we draw a line in the sand, we've got mm -hmm. to cross it. Okay, the, the sin nature in us just calls us. Put your foot across that line. So you put the foot across the line. What happens? Mom and Dad, come down. You have trespassed the boundary. And there is a clear consequence to what has happened here. For my kids, that would mean giving what we call an attitude adjustment. <laughs> and it was always amazing to me. And I'm sure Jennifer would would say it as well. I'm sure she noticed it, but they're so unhappy, they're so angry, they're they're in this position where they cross this line to see how far they can go. They cross it, they realize now that there's consequences to pay for it. They pay the consequence and they come out from it completely happy the rest of the day. It was a crazy thing. Now, I don't remember that. Now, I wasn't one that got uh, whooped a whole lot growing up, except by my teachers at school. We won't even go into that. It's like, uh, like a therapeutic session we need. But uh, my mom, her her dis her greatest discipline to me uh, wasn't to get a spanking. Because so I was always a pretty big kid, and uh, you know, those that, that didn't hurt. But the very worst thing she could do to me ever, the most torturous form of discipline was. Sit down and don't move. And I'd be totally cool with that now. I could sit down and not move just fine. But when I was a little, I would rather die than to sit down and be still. Because there's so much in this planet I need to do. So much I need to play with. But I knew the boundary. Now, folks, we are... We are living in a time when those boundaries have been taken away. And have you noticed? You've, you've got some little kids now that have parents that have bought into the lie. The lie is don't beat your children, they will die. Now, why is that a problem? Because God says in Proverbs, beat your children, put the rod to them, they won't die. <laughs> so now you've got these little kids with parents that have bought into this lie that, that they're damaged somehow mentally, emotionally, they're going to grow up to be like serial killers or something if they get spanked. And have you noticed these kids, when they melt down, man, they melt down big. Why do they do that? They have no idea what the boundary is. It would be like you and I being totally lost in the woods and having no clue how to get back home. Because everywhere we look is just more trees. There's no landmarks. There's, there's nothing that we can look at and say, this gets me home. Well, when you set a firm boundary, especially by the word of God, they know very clearly what the boundaries are. It makes you happy. We're all happy. And if those boundaries are taken away, it's a real problem. Kids don't feel safe when that happens. Now, in order to raise them up this way, parents must be godly parents and not worldly friends to their kids. This world will tell you over and over and over again that this is not the way to parent. And how you need to parent is to let your child know they've got a buddy in you. They've got a friend in you. You're basically like a friend to them that has money. <laughs> and makes some stuff. I remember one time when one of my kids was very, very little. And uh, he had an epiphany that that I wasn't his friend. He, uh, he had a little issue come up. He had a little time of revival <laughs> with Jesus through Dad. And uh, he gets up from that situation, and he's, he's huffing, 
And he puffed it off said, hey, so you know I wasn't with it. She, <laughs> she would have acted a whole different way. But he gets up and he's huffing and he's puffing. And he looks at me and he says, I don't want to be your friend anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, so it hurt. No, it didn't. Because I looked back at him and I said, that's okay. I'm not your friend. I'm your father. <laughs> and no kidding. He stood there for like three minutes. Just like, what did I just hear? <laughs> you know, I don't know if he's bothered that I wasn't a friend or it was the father. I don't know what the problem was. But, but he had that realization. And I, I don't know that it ever dawned on him like that. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I pray that I will be friends to my kids, but never at the expense of the Word of God or how God wants me to raise them. Amen. You see. Brothers and sisters, that's the way it has to be. I, I don't want to put my kids' soul on the line so that they will like me. I'm okay with you not liking me. I, I want my kids to be happy, all right? I don't want anybody piling out of here this morning and be like, ah, oh, Pastor, he don't want his kids to be happy. No, no, the pastor wants his kids to be very happy, but I want them to be happy by being holy, you see. I don't want them to be happy in the world. That's vain. It's empty. It won't last. The happiness that comes from holiness does. So I must seek the holy one, and I must teach them to do the same things that they might know him. Brothers and sisters, I have I have made so many mistakes as a parent. Like a lot of them. There's been times that I have stirred up anger in my children because I didn't treat them biblically. Maybe I said something unkind. Maybe I was too harsh. There's been times that I have been like David was to Absalom and neglected guiding them in the way that they should go. There's been times that I've been like Eli and didn't warn my kids and correct them as I should. There's been times that they've seen me put myself first above them. It's a real problem with me. I do a lot of things differently if I had to do it over again. So I'm just telling you, that what I'm about to say comes from a father that is nowhere near what he needs to be. But one time I was talking to one of my kids and uh, I don't even remember what they brought up. I don't even remember what the conversation was about. But they kind of they kind of gave me a huff. You know, you know the huff. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I asked, I said, what was the huff about? <laughs> And they said, well, it's, it's like any time we talk to you, you have to get all spiritual about everything. Now, they did not mean that as a compliment, but I took it that way. Yeah, I put that one in parenting wind. And I pray that they always say that. That even when I'm dead and gone, they can say, man, he pointed us to Christ. Amen. That's what he did. And I do pray every day, as I know many of you fathers do, that we would be fatherly to our children as our Heavenly Father is fatherly to us. And that we would reveal the righteousness of God to them as Christ has revealed it to us. And that the Spirit would guide them and lead them and protect them as, as he like leads, guides, and protects us. And I know there's a lot of y'all here today, your kids are grown, they're gone. I know a lot of kids, you have kids that are a lot older than me, they're still living. I believe that they, like me, still look to you as mom, still look to you as dad. They still need you, they still love you, and I know you love them. But I want us to see here today that the way that we love each other as parents and children is to show our love to Christ to them. I think the very best thing I could ever give my child is an example of a heart that loved Jesus. And the very best thing a kid can give me, one of my kids can give me, is that they love him too. So I'd ask you just to bow with me for a moment as we come before him. And folks, today, if, if in your heart and in your life you're seeing that you, you may not live 
this word out to your family as you should. I, I just want you to know that God is a God who is merciful and gracious. And if you will turn to him, he is more than glad to receive you. If you need him to save you from your sins, he will do that. If you will call on him and turn from them. If in your life you are realizing as a parent that you need to be more God-centered to your family and as children you need to be more honoring and obedient to your parents, then this is the God that we run to and say, Lord, I have messed up, but I am here to make it right. Forgive me and give me the strength, and he will. So as we stand here in a moment to sing this hymn of invitation, if you would come to Christ, then do that where you are at and have the boldness to to come and announce that to us today. We would all be tickled to death if a kid or a mom or dad or parent or grandparent, whoever would come to Jesus today. And let's pray his blessings upon our families. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And God, we thank you for your word and we thank you for your grace. And we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who calls us to yourself in such a way, Lord, that we can always find forgiveness and a new life in you. And God, if there's someone here today that needs that new life, I pray, God, that you would just touch their hearts now as only you can and turn them, Lord, to yourself. Give them, Lord, the grace they need, I pray. And Father, for we who are raising our children, help us to raise them in this word and bless our children, God, that their hearts would belong to you and to and to show that relationship through being obedient to your word. Father, whatever need, whatever concern someone may have on their hearts and their souls today, may it be answered by your power and grace to the glory of your name. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>